Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Meenal from IntelliCap. I'm part of the investment banking team, and I look at the financial services world. And I have uh, joining me today Sahil uh, from Aspada. Uh, he has been focusing a lot on the SME financing space and uh, brings to the table a lot of international perspective as well. So Sahil, if you can uh, please join me here. Uh, we have a very brief presentation uh, about what we are going to talk about today. Uh, and we'll keep this short because we want more people uh, to talk here and also have discussions around the table. So, uh, to start with, the opportunity in the MSME financing space. I think everybody in the room here knows about the opportunity, which is why we have so many people here. Uh, so, this is some data I think everybody knows about how significant uh, is the contribution of MSMEs uh, to the development of the country. Uh, Intellicap had done a report for IFC on the MSME financing gap. This was way back in 2012. I think it's one of the most quoted reports in the space. And uh, uh, we are fortunate that IFC has asked us to do an update on this report. And uh, currently, based on our estimations, the, the addressable gap is somewhere around 20 trillion. And uh, I think we are nowhere close to reaching that number. Uh, which is why the context of, you know, uh, is it possible to address some of this gap, uh, which is currently being uh, addressed by informal sources, if uh, <coughs> technology can play a part in this and what we can do to bridge this gap. Um, what we have seen in the last few years is uh, fintech players have, uh, have addressed some of the core areas uh, in MSME financing in terms of either bringing new investors to the table until now, uh, some of these investors were informal lenders or banks. Uh, so getting some of these new investors uh, onto a formal platform, uh, identifying a new set of companies that uh, or enterprises that we can lend to, uh, finding alternate ways of doing credit assessment, uh, because some of these people may not have a credit track record or a borrowing track record, and in simplifying the process, uh, and making this whole thing digital, thereby cutting down costs and passing on some of those benefits to other players. Some of the models that we've seen and we'll be talking about uh, today are uh, uh, P2P lending, which helps in bringing uh, a new set of investors uh, to this space. Uh, we have e-commerce or uh, merchant finance players, invoice financing, supply chain financing. So from the models, what we're seeing is uh, there is an attempt to address uh, every aspect of funding requirement of an uh, enterprise, be it equity or debt capital, or short-term financing in the form of invoice financing or supply chain financing. Uh, what we will be doing is uh, we will also have uh, a couple of players in each of these uh, spaces who will talk a little bit about their business model and how they've seen things evolve. Uh, what we have seen globally is there have been several success stories, especially in individual uh, financing, where alternate uh, credit scoring mechanisms and use of alternate data has been very successful. Uh, but this gets really challenging when you start moving from individual loans and individual assessment to an enterprise assessment. Uh, and these challenges are uh, right from the availability of data uh, to even understanding the different kinds of uh, business cycles and business models that are there. Uh, Converting that understanding uh, into institutional uh, processes so that this can be replicated uh, with scale. Uh, when it comes to recovery of loans, uh, putting in early warning signals of you know, finding distressed uh, or likely to get distressed assets and uh, the actual mechanism of recovery. So these are still very untested areas when it comes to uh, financial uh, fintech lending. And for the, uh, the lender itself, or rather the platform or the fintech company, uh, their own challenges in terms of uh, having sufficient capital available to, to address this or being able to deal with the risks of uh, working in the segment. So given this context, uh, some of the discussion topics that we've identified, and uh, so these are also the tables that uh, we've put up. Uh, so we'll be talking about the opportunity and in terms of opportunity, we are not talking about the market size, but we are talking about uh, how we can uh, bring some of these informal financing uh, sources to mainstream. 
uh, or how we can include more enterprises which are currently there is no uh, track of these companies anywhere, how we can bring them uh, into the mainstream fold. In terms of regulation, uh, how do we think the space should uh, be regulated? Does it require regulation at this stage? Would regulation stifle the growth of innovation in this uh, space? Or are we actually heading the microfinance way where uh, we will keep growing, growing, growing and then one fine day uh, you know, everything will come crashing down around our ears. Uh, what can we do with technology? What further can we do? And where can technology add maximum value? And uh, how things have evolved outside India? What are the learnings that we can take from outside India and, uh, uh, and implicate to, uh, or replicate over here? Sorry. So these are some of the <coughs> thoughts that we wanted to hear uh, views on. We have a very interesting audience, a cross section from uh, uh, from traditional NBFCs, from banks, uh, fintech companies. Uh, we have investors. We have people who have uh, been in the global uh, space. Uh, uh, so it would, it would be great to hear your views on this, and I would like Sahil to add to this. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us. Uh, I think we have uh, one hell of a room put together. People who have deep domain expertise, and that's something that uh, we wanted to have a very curated discussion. Uh, and I think uh, looking at the room today, we will definitely achieve that. Uh, just a couple of uh, points that I wanted to put for discussion, uh, and, and I think it's open across across the tables. Um, we've uh, we've looked at a fair number of companies in the space. We've invested in a couple. We continue to be deeply uh, interested in the SME financing space. And a couple of questions that uh, keep coming up are, uh, you know, one of them is in, in the opportunity space, what is the business model that, that, that works and that scales? Uh, and often the discussion comes down to, does a marketplace work or do you have to have an NBFC or how do you structure uh, for scale? Um, and that's something, you know, we have a personal, I mean, we have a firm view on this, uh, but but would love to see what, what the room thinks of the, these models. Um, secondly, one of the things that, um, is almost nation, we don't really see that much discussion around. Uh, but the people in the know, people who run businesses, uh, definitely look at it very closely is, um, how do you think about verticalized financing? And uh, certain, I mean, you can begin with uh, uh, certain products, like invoice discounting or, or merchant cash advances and things like that, but, uh, you know, is there a merit to looking at, uh, uh, say, supply chain financing in, in particular verticals? I know. Sanjay Ade does some very interesting work there. Um, uh, you know, in, in education and healthcare, are, are there are there kind of verticalized loans that uh, might work because of domain expertise in that sense? Um, so that's that's one. Uh, I think uh, uh, Kabir and, and, and Shashank have been doing some very interesting work uh, with the India stack. So there, uh, there's some there's a key role that technology can play in accelerating the lending process and making it much more efficient. Uh, both from a documentation standpoint and I think uh, there's a conversation around what kind of data can be shared, what is the architecture for consent in that sense for uh, and, and how deep can you go. Um, and of course, uh, people look, I mean, we, we talk about alternate uh, credit scoring models or data models, but the question there is uh, um, data in the formal sense of actually being on paper doesn't really exist uh, when you actually push deep into India and you start actually lending to people who've been doing business for 30, 40 years, but you know, books in the traditional sense of the word don't necessarily exist with these people. Um, so, and, and that by no means means they're less credible businesses. They've, they've been around for you know, a very long time. So how does one think about lending to people like this? Um, so I think, uh, and the discussion around future is, is, is a question of, uh, we have to put in place structures to formalize this and uh, basically make this process more efficient. Because I think there's a consensus in the room that the market is very deep <coughs> and large. Uh, the only question is how does a formal organization address this need? So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing your views. Uh, Tom, Kat, uh, Tom and I and, and uh, the folks from IntelliCap will be uh, around if there's something that you know you'd like to talk to us about, otherwise we'll just keep meander and butt our heads in every once in a while. And uh, we'll debrief at the end of it with uh, what we think are the views of the room. Um, 
That's about it. Yes. Thank you. So um, everyone who's seated at the four tables, you should have discussion questions um, in front of you. We're going to spend about 25 minutes or so, so I'll say um, till about 1.50, um, you know, going through the questions. For those of you who come in late, um, the four tables are, table one is focused on opportunities in the sector, two is regulations, three is the role of technology, and four is future outlook and international perspectives. So for those of you sitting in the back, feel free to um, jump in um, on any of the tables you're interested in. Um, around 150, we're going to ask that every table summarize what their um, what the discussions were. So you should have a marker at your table, and feel free to use um, the poster board to make some notes down because we'll ask that you present it to the rest of the group um, at 150. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to you know, ping any of the telecom team members here, and we'll be circulating around as well. Thank you. I think this is a great question. Uh, and we basically looked at two aspects. One is the legal structure and uh, whether the legal structure of the business is important. So interestingly, we found that you know where fintech and technology is really working is primarily in the unorganized sector, where uh, you really don't have a choice. I mean, they're all primarily sole partnerships. Uh, and you know, that, that we, we can't really control that. But, the, but I, I think the interesting observation that was made was that actually the more informal, the more recoverable. Whereas with limited liability, it's actually more difficult to recover the money. And I think a great example is the banking system itself. Whether it's India or globally, we are struggling with you know corporates. We are chasing them out of India, trying to bring them back into India, and not able to recover vast sums of money. Whereas uh, the retail sector in banking is really doing well, and that's what is poised for growth. I think that's you know one of the best examples of this uh, this point. The second is availability of alternate data. So are these data? Is there alternate data available? Uh, can we do anything with it? And of course, the answer is, Arika, there is some amount of alternate data. Uh, but some. I mean, yeah, some. So, of course, there is opportunity for it to be a lot. <coughs> and uh, the, I think the issue is that there are data. There is, of course, the data. Again, you know, we thought to sort of be more focused because the SME is kind of a large sector. We decided that we focus on the unorganized, and really the micro and maximum and small, because, you know, that the requirements and the way the structure is is quite different. So, if you look at this unorganized, you know, micro sector, meso sector, there is telecom data available. There is, I would say available, I'm quoted. There's telecom data, there's bill payments data, there's uh, Neo Growth has done quite a bit of work with, you know, non-cash sales data in both. You've also done quite a bit of work with that. Or the social data, now of course that's, that remains to be proven as to whether you can give a loan based on Facebook and LinkedIn data. But that's going to be interesting. Let's see what happens 10 years down the road when people have been based on this kind of social media. Uh, I think that another area which we uh, touched upon but didn't go into detail is the government actually has access to quite a bit of data. And the data points are there. And the challenges are that there are different pools of data. And there is an opportunity to really bring all those pools together. Because that is really something which is going to be very powerful. Uh, you know, we discussed about Aadhaar. Aadhaar is there, but of course, Aadhaar cannot give you know information on the person. All that Aadhaar can do is say yes, no. Whether I am Jamuna, say yes or no. Whereas I think there's an opportunity, and you know, Aadhaar did really. We were all uh, Sahil. Sahil and I, he was right here in the second back. Yeah, we were all part of the Aadhaar team. Yeah. And one of the things which really uh, you know, was a vision in Aadhaar was that to create some kind of a credit group based on Aadhaar IDs. So while it may not be available based on consent, they, you know, there's an opportunity here for someone to really pool in information based on just the Aadhaar number. So pooling in of information, I think, you know, that's where there could be a challenge. And two is whether, you know, what amount of that information is really verifiable or not. So this is what I remember. I lost track of the conversation after that. So if anyone wants to add, please, please feel free.
I think we felt that uh, there is a huge opportunity on the FinTech uh, arena to look at the data and to look how can we get various pools of data, so how can we collect that various pools of data and into a digital format. And there I think Aadhaar uh, is one great initiative because fortunately the data that we collect, we want to collect, is individual or personal data. It's not a company data that we are looking at. So Aadhaar is actually the right method because Aadhaar links uh, you directly to the individual. So that's one uh, one big area where uh, fintech companies can work work on. Second is that how do we make sure that the data is verified and verifiable? So if the data is not verified, you get a lot of bills data which is not verified. It is it is of uh, doubtful use. So these are two areas where there is a huge opportunity. There may be challenges, but there is a huge opportunity to get behind that because we find a solution to that. No one can deny that this data can be used for creating credit uh, paradigms through which we can learn. And I think we had one more point on the collection part. That you know, no one is talking about the collection of, uh, of, of whatever you spend. How do you handle the delinquencies, etc.? And I think you will comment on the DSA part. I think the question was that will DSAs go away? I think we know that the DSAs are not because uh, we will need a touch at the customer uh, customer interface. Uh, yes, I think uh, a lot of it may be towards recovery of money, uh, verifying of data. So all this will, will continue.